In a world where more and more of us are getting cell phones, particularly the new smartphones that have, I don't know, seven or eight sensors on them, uh, that kicks off a lot of data. The businesses are all kicking off data. Uh, we're getting uh, the London Bridge is tweeting up and down. <laughs> and so we need new ways to build databases that can handle this kind of scale with this many people, many objects, and uh, Couchbase is it. We're going to hear all about what's going on in the real time database world and the uh, NoSQL world and uh, find out all about this new big data movement that's going on and uh, changing our world. Who are you? I'm Bob Wiederhold, the CEO of Couchbase, and uh, a longtime entrepreneur. This is my fifth startup company, uh, loving the new world of, of NoSQL and databases. So, it, just to explain what that w world is happening, I mean, I, you know, we all know what um, MySQL is. Yeah. Uh, where start there? Where, where does Couchbase uh, fit into this yeah. world? Well, well, first, uh, just with NoSQL. Uh, NoSQL, I think, really started a few years ago when people started having increased problems with relational databases and uh, technologies like MySQL and Postgres and, and, of course, the proprietary technologies from the big guys. And uh, really, the, the relational database is really a scale-up technology that had a very fixed uh, data model, a schema, and uh, a lot of application developers were starting to look for something different. They wanted something that provided them a much more flexible data model, a schemaless data model. Uh, and then they wanted something that was much higher performance and something that would scale a lot more easily uh, to deal with the huge amount of data that increasingly applications are having to deal with. Uh, and quite frankly, also to deal with the much larger number of users that are typically using applications since so much is available uh, over the internet and it yeah. just makes it all much more accessible and so uh, the flexible data model, the much higher performance and much easier scalability really drove people to look for something different and uh, at first it was, uh, there was nothing available and so yes. the big guys developed their own, right? So Google and Facebook and LinkedIn and Amazon all set their own experts out to, to try and solve the problem and uh, they did a lot of the pioneering work and uh, the papers that they presented, uh, you know, people paid attention to and a lot of development started, open source projects started and then commercial companies started to build up around those open source projects and uh, an industry materialized out of all that as it often does. And right now we're in the early stages of what I think will be just tremendous growth uh, for NoSQL technologies, whether it's Couchbase or uh, the many other NoSQL uh, companies that are out there today. Yeah, let's talk to the non-geeks for a, just a, a minute, yeah, you know, because sure. the, the database <laughs> geeks all understand this world. And yeah, they probably already know about you, right? <laughs> what What's the difference between the SQL approach and the NoSQL approach? Why does that? let you scale out or what does it let yeah. you do? So relational databases are fundamentally scale up technologies. Um, and so- That means you buy a bigger machine. To bigger and bigger machine with yeah. more CPUs and more memory and more disk space and you just get a bigger and bigger and bigger machine, right? And then when you got the biggest machine possible, then you split your database into two databases and you store, shard, shard it, right. Yeah. Uh, you store everything east of the Mississippi in one database, everything west of the Mississippi in another database or something like that. Um, and uh, once you do that, you, you start to lose a lot of the advantages of relational databases and the schemas and everything, first of all. Uh, and also it turns out that your performance can start to degrade and you're, you have to change your application so that now, now it knows about two databases. And then if you continue to grow, now all of a sudden you got to shard it again, right? Now all of a sudden you got to go by state, right? And, and then you got to go by zip code. And every time there's, you know, changes that you have to make at the application level and there's complexities involved in having to manage lots of different databases. And uh, when you're storing a lot of data, and particularly when things are growing very fast, that can be a, a really significant problem, right? The other thing is just the data model. Uh, so relational databases have a very fixed uh, model. It's, you know, it's a schema. And so 
It's a very formal way of organizing your data. Name, uh, address, phone number. Right? Yeah, and, and, and more important, Lo, is that you, you typically have certainly tens, and in many cases, hundreds or thousands of interrelated tables, right? And, uh, and, and you know, you get your DBA to sit and figure out exactly what's the right way to organize that data, you normalize your data. When you want to make a change, when you want to add uh, a, a new type of data, you got to go to the DBA and figure out, you know, on what, wh where you're going to add a column, on what table, then you got to convert your old database to the new database. It's not a very agile, very flexible approach to managing your data. And so with NoSQL, it's a very flexible data model. Uh, for example, with a document-oriented data model, uh, you want to add a new piece of data, just store a new piece of data in, in your document, right? And, there, there's, and, and as a result, uh, particularly for application developers that need to move very fast, be very agile, they're in very competitive markets, and they're constantly wanting to evolve what data they store and, and how they use that data. Uh, this kind of a more flexible approach is really appealing to them. Um, so, uh, so those are some of the, the, the key reasons that, that people to move, move to know And because you don't have a uh, centralized schema, you can uh, spread over many, many machines, right? Exactly, yeah. I mean, the, the, since, since all of the data is stored in documents, it turns out that it's much easier to store these documents in a very distributed fashion, right? So. Uh, rather than having in the relational world, for example, two or three you know, separate databases, in a distributed database that NoSQL provides, you're really just uh, distributing your data across many standard commodity machines, but it's still one database, right? The application still views it as one database, even though all that data is, is distributed across uh, at least theoretically an infinitely you know, uh, large number of, of machines in your database cluster. Okay. So, uh, so in the NoSQL world, how do, where do you guys fit in? Because there's Cassandra, there's all sorts of you know new ideas. But yeah. How do you guys fit into that world? Yeah, to, to pick you know kind of three of the the leading companies and the different technologies uh, that, that that they each offer today, and and also how that's changing a little bit uh, over time. Um, there there are three basic technologies that people talk mostly about. Uh, one is a key value store. And key value basically is all about just sets and gets, you know, reads and writes, and you know, a key is Robert, and then there's a blob of information associated with Robert. And the database is just gonna do reads and writes based on the key names and, and serve up that blob of information to the, app, to the application. Uh, a document-oriented database is, is a specific type of key value store, and now you're able to store documents. And in our case, for example, they're JSON documents, uh, and now the database actually understands what a JSON document is. So for yeah. example, if uh, the Robert document inside it, we may have first name Robert, we may have your street number, street name, your zip code. And, and now of course you can build uh, indexes on that, uh, secondary indexes on that data. So I can build an index, for example, on zip codes. And now the application can say, give me all the people that are in XYZ zip code, and the database is now able to provide that information. So document database fundamentally um, provides indexing and querying and those kinds of operations. And those are kinds of things that, of course, people that are using relational databases uh, uh, want, uh, oftentimes out of a database. And so it, uh, you know, it, it, it's a very useful capability. Uh, and so that's basically what a document database is. And uh, uh, MongoDB is an example of a document database today. Yeah. And Couchbase, we're actually a key value store that with our next uh, release, um, which you can get previews of right now, uh, we actually turned it into a document database. And so you can do all that indexing and querying. Uh, the third type of, of database is a column family database. And uh, that uh, has a somewhat more structured uh, schema. Um, some people still describe it as schemaless because it's very flexible. Uh, it stores information, has columns and super column families, and somewhat more complex, but uh, very useful for, for certain use cases. So those are the three, I think, um, uh, uh, types of, 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 database, of NoSQL databases. Uh, that get most attention. Um, usually graph databases are, are put into NoSQL category as well. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's it, probably important to, to, to mention also. I think most of the NoSQL players uh, don't believe that there's one database that's going to solve the world's problems. Um, 
while we think that relational databases have some limitations, they also do things, you know, uh, a number of things really, really well. They're yeah. going to be around for a long, long time, and they're the right technology to use uh, in the right kinds of use cases. Uh, when you need transactions, for example, debit credit type transactional capability, uh, that's the, the use case that, that's most commonly referred to right away as something that relational databases do very well. If you need very ad hoc querying and things like that, then, then relational databases do that well. And, and, uh, and, and each of the, the different types, I think, you know, uh, fit different needs. And I think that's the, the, the world that we're headed towards, is that you're going to have a choice. You know, the last 40 years, it's been all about relational databases. It's, yeah. it's only what kind of relational data, database you're going to use. And now you're moving into an era where you're going to have some choice and you're going to pick the right one for the particular job that you have. Yeah. On the relational side, we have lots of companies that charge lots of money, you know, Oracle and, yeah. and other companies. That's a companies. big change that's taking place too, I think, yeah. How so? Um, well, I, for most of the last 40 years, um, not just in the database world, but, but, uh, but in general, obviously it's been all about proprietary uh, technologies. Um, in the database space, those proprietary uh, technologies have come from Oracle and IBM and, and Microsoft as the three big leaders. Uh, and, and obviously in the last 10 years, to some extent, the last 20 years, open source has been uh, a, a more and more prominent model for uh, both developing software and delivering software. And uh, in the database world, it kind of started in a big way with MySQL, uh, which obviously is, is open source, Postgres. Uh, and that's continued now with, uh, with NoSQL. And so I don't know that, that it's literally true that every NoSQL technology is open source, but it, it, it certainly feels that way. Yeah, Mongo and, and you are, right? Uh, Mongo is, uh, Couchbase is completely open source. Obviously Cassandra is, is open source, uh, just to, to, to name a few. And uh, I, I think that's uh, what it's going to be. I think uh, the database industry going forward is going to be dominated by open source technologies um, and, uh, and and obviously uh, because the, the whole distribution model typically associated with open source technology is very different uh, the price points are very different um, it, there is also a disruption taking place from a business model perspective uh, in addition to a disruption that's taking place from a technology perspective yeah I know a few people who are building a uh, apps for these new Google Glasses or the bleeding edge of cell phones, and they're seeming to go more the, the NoSQL route, you know, yeah. going to the Mongo or going with you guys, um, where older things that are already built in MySQL, if they're running, they're, they seem to be more resistant to the NoSQL route. Is that, is that yeah, a think, correct I, perception? Yeah, I think the, that's true in general. I mean, I, and I think that's true not just you know, in the database space, but whenever there's a new technology that comes along, uh, a lot of times people talk about, you know, replacing something, and, and more often than not, it, it, it really is a part of a wave where all the new stuff gets developed on the new technology, and that's actually how it, uh, m you know, it g gets its adoption into the industry as a whole, as opposed to wholesale rip and replace, right? Yeah. So. There certainly is some rip and replace, and you know we love to tout our stories of how people have moved off of Oracle and, and others. But, but that's a you know that's a smaller percentage. Um, as is often the case, it's the innovators and the early adopters building new applications that are meeting you know the latest and greatest needs of consumers and, and business users. Um, they have different requirements oftentimes, and yeah. that fit better with a new technology. And so that's certainly the case. And so, you know, the early adopters of NoSQL, I think pretty much across the board, um, certainly for Couchbase and I think for others as well, have been internet companies. Um, and by that I mean uh, companies whose entire businesses revolve around the internet, right? And uh, they're not brick and mortar type companies, right? right. Um, and, uh, you know, the verticals that fit into, into those, uh, that internet company category are verticals like social gaming, yeah. Uh, Zynga's our largest customer. I, we have something over 50 social gaming companies that are using uh, Couchbase. Um, they, um, you know, they need the data model flexibility. They're very competitive, moving forward very quickly. They need high performance because people, if you have a sluggish game, people are going to move on and find another game. So they need very high performance. 
and they certainly need scalability. Um, you know, in, in the case of social games, it's a hits business, right? And so you kind of, you know, you kind of move along, you hope you get some users, and then all of, a sudden, all of a sudden something happens and you go viral, and then boy, you need scalability. You need to be able to scale really fast, you need to be able to maintain your performance. It's a global business, so you're serving users around the world, so you have to be always on 24 by 7 by 365. So, you know, social gaming is a good example of, of uh, are you guys, uh, 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 this is all hostable on the cloud, right? Obviously it's open source, so you can be, you can just download the community edition and you can run it wherever you want to run it, including Rackspace and, uh, and, and EC2 and, uh, and many of our paid customers are, are running in those places too. And, mm -hmm. and obviously uh, those, um, those cloud uh, services, you know, infrastructure as a service in particular, um, give you great ability to scale very easily, and you know when you when you need more scale, you know fire up a few more instances. In, in our case, push a button, add them to the cluster, you know rebalance your data over a greater number of customers. You know give yourself, you know far more, uh, you know transactions per second, you know uh, database transactions per second, and so it's an environment that lends itself to to scalability, and so a lot of people are running it that way. Uh, cool. And in the social gaming space, that's certainly the case. I What's happening in the business? You guys are coming out with 2.0 in a couple months. So yeah, it's September-ish, right? Yeah, yeah, we're really excited about our 2.0 release. Um, and 2.0 release is is two major things. A lot of of medium-sized things, but the two major things is number one, uh, Couchbase becomes a document-oriented database. Uh, so you get to, you know again all the indexing and querying that we talked about before. And uh, so we have lots of customers who love our performance, love our scalability, love our always on you know, uh, availability, uh, but they really want to get some indexing and querying capability. And so this is a big step forward that I think really is going to expand our market opportunity quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, give MongoDB a competition as a document database really for the first time. Um, yeah. We, we kind of sort of compete with them today. Uh, but the truth is, is that you know, if you want indexing and querying today, you know, you tend to go down that route. If you want, you know, performance and scalability, you, you know, you tend to go down the route of, of Couchbase. There are some applications that don't really need very high performance, right? I mean, they're just the nature of the applications are such that, you know, if you have, uh, you know, 10 millisecond, you know, reads and writes, that's perfectly fine, right? Um, and there are other applications, you know, social gaming I think is an example where you not only want sub-millisecond access to data, right, but you, it needs to be consistent, right? You can't just on average, you know, get sub-millisecond access. You need at the 99th percentile, you need to get sub-millisecond access, right? Well, that's a real strength of, of our solution, right? And we've run a bunch of benchmarks and, and, and things to, to show that. And so if you want that kind of performance, then you know, that's a good reason to, to come our way. Um, so you know, we've tended to, to work a lot with customers that are operating with 30, 50, you know, 75, 100 nodes in their cluster. And so we, we think we've built up some real expertise there. And um, so, so that's where we've been, we, we've been strong. Let me give you a second example is, is with ad platforms. Uh, again, their performance is really important. Uh, you know, when you come to a website, uh, the ad platform has 40 milliseconds to paint a customized ad on your screen, right? So, uh, and these days, your preferences, the things that you like and dislike, you know, are you in the 25 to 35 age bracket, or you have a certain income level, uh, did you look at uh, cars on the internet, you know, three times over the last, you know, two weeks? I mean, that, that kind of information is all stored in your profile. And, all that information is now stored server side. And so when you come to a website, your cookie basically identifies who you are and then the ad platform wants to pick your profile out of a database of you know, 400, 500 million profiles, yeah. pick out your information as fast as possible and then run a bunch of business logic and select what ad makes sense for you. And they want as much time to run that business logic as possible. Uh, and then still stay within that 40 milliseconds. So again, getting very uh, fast access to data, um, and making sure it's predictable. You know, it's not just average latencies, but you know, you got to be able to do that. You know, very predictably. You know, that stuff is really important, right? So, 
you know, you go down through those kinds of use cases and, and you know, there are certain use cases where that's a really good match for and, and, and you know, other competitors, it's, it, you know, they have different profiles where it makes most sense, right? Yep. So anyway, hopefully that gives you an idea. Absolutely, I'm really interested in where you, you guys are going because I think you're laying down the groundwork for uh, all these new contextual devices that are coming out. I mean, Google Glasses are the first ones and they need that speed because as you're walking down the street, if something doesn't pop up, it's gone, right? Yeah. It yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah. So yeah, for lots of those applications, um, you need very high performance. And uh, you mentioned earlier just, uh, you know, more and more sensors that are out there, right? And uh, we, in, 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 increasingly, you know, of course, you need to be able to store that data. Uh, and then depending on the application, you need to be able to combine it in different ways. and and then be able to, to push information back out to the user, right? So there's, uh, you know. Where, yeah. where do we learn more about it? Uh, so you go to, uh, to couchbase.com, and uh, for the more technically inclined out there, uh, of course, we're an open source company, so you can go and download this stuff for free. You can use it to your heart's content for free. Uh, obviously, if you'd like some help, then uh, you can also contact Couchbase, and uh, we offer, you know, Enterprise Edition, which is the same as the Community Edition, yeah. um, but uh, provide you with best practice expertise and technical support and, and things like that, like like other uh, uh, open source companies. Very cool. Well, we're an open source company too. So awesome. Thank you for joining that. Thank crowd. you. I really and, uh, enjoyed it. Thanks for coming by.